this souvenir market northeast of the Tunisian capital Tunis might not look that full, but there are more people here now than one might have expected. The toppling two and a half years ago of Tunisia's former ruler, Zin al Abedin Ben Ali, practically toppled this industry with it. Hotels emptied overnight, and over time, tourism dropped by 15 percent. Tunisian officials say the numbers are now coming back, but the vendors here simply don't believe them. Because of the conditions, the attacks in Mount Shambi, and what people are seeing on TV, it's normal that people would be afraid. Arabs and Tunisians are afraid, let alone the tourists. Tourism in this North African coastal nation is the second biggest moneymaker behind agriculture. Indirectly, it equals roughly two million jobs, about a fifth of the population. Proximity, Italy is just a few hundred kilometers across the sea, and language, French is widely spoken, have helped make Europeans feel at home here for years. My family was more scared than I was. And I asked my friend, we called our friend, and he said there was no problem at all, so we came in Tunisia anyway. The government wants others to do the same and has promised to help. This week, officials unveiled a new plan that will extend marketing campaigns and specifically target Asian travelers. The government hopes the calm waters and the post-revolutionary calm in the streets might attract them. But the tourists and that calm aren't guaranteed. Attacks by suspected Islamic militants have become more brazen in recent months, which vendors say explains why most tourists who do come now prefer to stay by their hotel pools. And while the figures may be disputed, one thing can't. The vendors used to close their shops well after sunset. Now they close well before. Rowie Ruttenberg, CCTV, in Sidi Bou Said, Tunisia.